Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about finding the orchard growth time for orchards of radius 3 and then for orchards of radius 6. Uh, so for the orchard of radius 3, the book gives us sort of a nice page where it summarizes a lot of the information. Um, let's talk for just a moment before we get into too much calculation about this cross-sectional area thing because I've been seeing that phrase, that term messing people up. Um, the cross-sectional area is talking about the area of a cross section that is you cut this tree take a slice out of the tree um, and measure that area of that circle let's talk about area for a second area is equal to pi times the radius squared well in this problem um, or not in this problem but if we take this equation and solve it backwards, we divide by pi. And then we take the square root and find that the radius is the square root of area divided by pi. What that means for this problem is that if the area of the tree trunk increases at a constant rate of 1.5 inches every year, then the radius does not, so here's on my area increasing at a constant rate, 1.5 inches squared every year, 1.5, 3, 4.5, 6, etc. The radius does not increase at a constant rate. It increases at a curved rate. And so unless you really want to learn about the square root function, unless you feel like solving what is essentially a calculus problem that relates the, uh, the area of this curve and the properties of this curve to the changing area here, the safest plan is going to be to convert everything into area uh, so that we don't have to worry about converting this constant rate and having this weird curve. So we're going to find take all of our tree information instead and convert it into area. So to approach this problem, we need to think about the trees at two points in time. I've been calling these the initial times and the final times. And so I'm going to start making a little chart with uh, some information about the trees initially and the trees finally. Now these trees initially, it's given that they have a circumference of 2.5 inches. So I'm going to write circumference equals 2.5. The trees finally, we don't know what their circumference is, but we do know that their radius is 0 0.32 units. That's what you found in the previous video. If you're not sure where that number came from, go back to the last video, watch that thoroughly, and then come back here. So the radius of the final trees was 0 0.32 units. Now I notice something right here. This 2.5 is inches. This 0.32 is in units, just generic units. And that doesn't feel like a match. So the first step to all of this problem is we need to convert everything into inches before we go really any further with anything involving areas. So what do we know about these units? Well, a problem tells us. Here is one additional piece of information about the orchard. The unit distance is from 0, 0 to 1, 0 is 10 feet. So if I know that the tree is 0.32 units, I could do 0.32 times 10 to get 3.2 feet. This is 10 feet per unit. And then, I'm not really done. I want inches. I've got feet. I could do 3.2 times 12 inches per foot to get uh, the final answer, which is that the trees will have a radius of 38.4 units. Sorry, 38.4 inches. Remember, though, what we said at the very start, which is that we want to convert everything eventually into area. So 
we could approach this by making a uh, chart, or we can just approach this for each tree by solving um, through for area. So for the final tree, we're actually really close to finding the area. We know that area is pi r squared, which is pi times 38.4 squared. I've got a calculator, you've got a calculator. Uh, let's just do it, pi times 38.4 squared. Big number, 4632.46 inches squared. I can't even write it down, it's so big. 4632.4 inches squared. That point four, yeah. Let's go, let's just round to point five. We'll round to point five. The initial trees had a circumference of 2.5 inches. From the circumference, the next thing to find is probably the diameter. You can do 2.5 divided by pi. and get about 0.8. Then you can find the radius, which is going to be half the diameter, 0 0.4 inches. And then you can find the area by doing pi times 0 0.4 squared. about 0.5. Now we know three things about the area. We know the initial area is 0 0.5. We also know that the trees grow at a rate of 1.5 inches every year. We're going to let x represent the number of years. And after some number of years, the trees will have a radius of 4,632.5. And look what we've done. We took this information about our trees and made a linear equation. To solve this linear equation, we'll subtract 0.5. So we get 1.5x equals 4,632. And then we'll take that number and say x is equal to 4,632, all divided by uh, 1.5. 3,088 years. You may be surprised at this number. It's a pretty big number. That's a lot of years. But let's think about these trees for a second. Right now, they're 2.5 inches circumference. They're a half inch radius. That's tiny. These are very small trees. And when they reach a radius uh, of 38 units, that's about a meter. So that's a diameter of two meters. That's as tall as Mr. X. So these trees are growing from very small trees to incredibly large, like redwood sized trees. And when you think about it in terms of uh, that type of size, 3,000 years starts to make a little more sense. Now we're going to go ahead and find the orchard time for radius 6. That's an orchard of radius 6. Uh, and I made a note that the tree radius, the hideout tree radius for orchard of radius 6 is 0 0.164 units. Why is it that? Uh, because of everything we did in the previous video. So I'm going to copy that 0 0.164 units. What I'm going to do, more or less, is take almost all of this work and duplicate it. The only change is that instead of 0 0.32 units, it's going to be 0 0.64, 164 units in the start. For the first step, I've just copied my initial my chart about the initial trees from this segment over here because nothing has changed about the initial trees. 
Uh, they still start with a circumference of 1.5 inches, which means they have a, an initial starting area of 0 0.5 square inches. Now let's look at our final trees. We said the final tree radius is 0.164 units. We know one unit equals 10 feet. And so we can do uh, the original radius is going to be 1.64 feet. And I can do that times 12. We get 19.68 inches. We know the area is pi r squared, which is pi times 19.68 squared one thousand two hundred and sixteen point seven uh, four we'll just round to point seven inches squared just like before we know that the trees start at a radius of 0 0.5. They grow at a rate of 1.5 inches squared per year. X represents, will represent the number of years. And eventually these trees are going to equal an area of 1216.7. So to solve this down, we're going to do 1216.7 minus 0 0.5 and then divide that by 1.5. I'm doing this in one step now so that I can put just this whole thing in my calculator uh, now that I've done it in one step. So we'll do a parentheses minus 0.5, close parentheses, and divide by 1.5. If you want to do this in multiple steps, feel free. Um, and we get an answer of 810.8 years. That's still a lot of years. These are still pretty big trees. 0.164 times 10, um, 19 inches radius. That's almost two feet. That's a foot and a half. That's a pretty big tree. So it could feasibly take 800 years for a tree to grow to that size. But as we add more trees to the orchard, notice that we went down from 3,000 to 800, 3,000 to 800. As we add more and more and more trees to this orchard, it's going to take less and less and less time so that maybe Maddie and Clyde possibly could still be alive to see their orchard become a final orchard hideout. Please review all these calculations. I'll zoom in on the first one for a second. Pause the video if you want to see it any further. I'll zoom in on the second one for a second. Pause the video if you need to see it any further. When you come to class on Friday, uh, or whenever we next have class, please be prepared to do this type of calculation. In your review packet, I've included a couple extra calculations about orchard growth and, and orchard time, just because I know we haven't done very many of those. Please feel free to use those as extra practice. Uh, I think they would challenge you. I think it might be a good thing to do. So uh, with that, I wish you luck. I wish you good studying, and I will see you very soon. This has been Eckmath for today.